Alright, what's going on everybody? <clears throat> the four, I mean, oh no, four, five, 28, 15 episode of Smackdown. <sighs> Remember when Smackdown was on Friday nights? Those were good times. Remember when it was actual good brand and not just the Meg of the WWE, you know? Alright, so we had Dean Ambrose start off talking about the match and how it's going to be the age of Ambrose once he gets his hand on the title from Seth and everything like that. So that build up for the possibility of Seth having a title. I mean, Seth, Seth's probably going to keep the title. That's another video of Dean possibly getting the title. And that led up to him um, to a rematch between himself and... Roman versus Seth and Kane. Uh, the Lucha Dragons went against Cesaro and Tyson Kidd in a lumberjack match. So pretty much everybody that's going to be in the Elimination Chamber was out there, but to make sure that they, you know, did the job to stay, keep them in the ring, put them back in the ring, or whatever. The Lucha Dragons beat Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. I respect Tyson Kidd and Cesaro for their ring work because they are very good um, athletes and wrestlers. My thing is, why Lucha Dragons winning? Why would they, why why let them have a win over? Because because my thing is, it's sad when you're the when you and three other people in the audience are chanting your Lucha 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 like all the way up in the rafters. You know, the guy probably had a mic on so you could hear him. So I don't I don't understand why that happened. Why they let them have that win? But who knows? I'm just a guy. I don't know. Uh, R Truth versus King Barrett. R Truth pinned King Barrett uh, with the lie detector and everything. Just boom, pin one two three. He evaded the bull hammer for me. Um, the whole R Truth actually possibly being a champion again in Continental. That excites me. I like that idea. Him or Dolph Ziggler. I prefer our truth uh, I think our truth can make you a champion. The people like him. Like he was singing with the kids. The audience letting them do the what's up part. Which is great, you know. I think between him and Dolph Ziggler, they would be good, good uh, Intercontinental Champions. <clears throat> Let's see. Then, of course, you know, Sheamus is in that IC match. So Sheamus came in, bro kicked. Um, both of them. You had Paige versus Naomi. Paige beat Naomi with Rampage. Um, I I I I like Paige when she first came, but now that Naomi is her own entity now, and she has Tamina with her, I would like to see her with that championship. I would like to see where they could go with that. I think there's a lot of area and territory for them to go, and I think they explore it. They could have something really, really good on their hands with that. Ryback defeated Yusef. I mean, Ryback defeated Rusev by disqualification. Um, cause he Ryback was thrown into the um, head first into the post by Rusev, and the ref was like, "Yeah, so you can't do that. So that's a disqualification." My thing is, Rusev and Lana cut a promo before the match. And I'm just like, so we're not rushing anymore? Because you sound Italian, to be honest. But we're not even rushing, and now all of a sudden you can speak fluent English. Like you've been on Rosetta Stone all day on the flight there. You're just like, oh, I'm going to get this. Like, I'm going to know this by the time I get there. No, we know you're from freaking America trying to act like Russians. Like, we, we know that. And apparently, you don't think we know that because you're slowly slipping to Americans. Like, Rusev's just going to disappear one day, and some guy named Bubba Jack is probably going to come up and speak perfect English and all kind of stuff like that with the country twain and then we're going to be expected to believe oh but you were Rusev you were a Russian so no pick a character and stick with it like I'm sorry if you pick this and it didn't go as far as you thought well guess what you're stuck with it you've you've tried before with other gimmicks like back in the research him and he's been back in the day I don't even remember his real name and what he character he did then it worked out too well this one worked out pretty good so let's see where this goes, you know. But apparently, get him very far because he's already breaking character and speaking fluid English with a crappy Russian accent, 
and Lana as well. Like she's dropping hers. Like I was like, I see the model and actress coming out of you. But that's neither here nor there. I just had to let that go. Michael Cole had an interview with um, Kevin Owens about his match with John Cena, and he he's just kind of like, you know, I beat up Sami Zayn, and that's somebody I care about. So just imagine, think about what I would do to Cena, because he doesn't really care for Cena. Doesn't care for Cena, where they probably go out for coffee after the match or whatever. Anyway, it's interesting to see this dynamic because my thing is, yes, it made a lot of sense because Kevin Owens has been doing this much longer than Cena. So to have that, yo, I know what I'm talking about thing, really, really um, sets him up for something good. I'm just interested to see where they're going to go with the NXT champion fighting the U.S. champion and I, I doubt it'll turn it. I think it's a non-title match if I'm correct. Like, it's a non-title match, but it'd be funny if at last minute it was like, oh, it's not, and Kevin Owens became the NXT champion and the U.S. champ. Just saying, but he stomped on it, so. Yeah, that pretty much threw that out the window. Reigns and Ambrose beat Rollins and Kane via disqualification because, of course, Tweedle D and Tweedle Dumb, a.k.a. J&J Security, came out and interrupted the match. And then the New Day came out and attacked Ambrose and it turned into a brawl. Like it always does, and not. I'd, I'd like to see a show end with a clean match at least once this year, you know. Which I think it has happened, but if I don't remember it, apparently either didn't happen or it wasn't good. Like I want a good quality, clean match that's just like, oh my gosh, I'm on the edge of my seat, you know. I haven't had one in a while, <sighs> so the whole interference and. Dirty Deeds to Xavier Woods, Spear to um, Big E, and then Seth, um, Dean got choke slammed by Kane, and Seth delivered a pedigree to Roman, which of course, I'm not going to say this is what happened, but I sent out a tweet and I was like, I'm not sure if I tagged Seth in it or not. I'm going to go look back. Or if y'all look back and let me know before I get there, I don't know. But I was like, so yeah, that pedigree, I'm going to need Seth to tighten up that pedigree. Because it was sloppy and looked like crap. Well, tonight he delivered. He delivered a very nice pedigree. My thing is, I wish the curb stomp was still there because I prefer it. For me, it's just like if... Dean Ambrose decided to start doing Sweet Chin music. No. Pick, you got your own stuff. He already used the spear, which everybody in the great grandma used. Edge used it. Right, like, people have used it. Come on, Goldberg. Like, you know, stop it. Cut that out. Be original. So I'm just like, you know what? At this point, I, don't, I care. But I'm, I'm more interested to see where the stories are going and what they're doing with everybody. So, to be honest, I, I'm i somewhat pleased with the route that we're going now. I'm becoming more interested, and what will make me really more inter much more interested is if, and no, this ain't got a race thing to it, just imagine, imagine this for a second. If our Divas champion was, was um, African American, Naomi, if our truth became our Intercontinental Champion, and either New Day or Primetime Players became our tag team champions. That would say something about WWE. That, you know, they like to play into big topics and things that are going on right now. So, social justice issues are big right now. So, they're kind of screw you to, society, to um, the bad people in society or whatever. Look, we have three African American champions. Boom. What then? You know, and that kind of turns the tables a little bit. But I think it would look real good on them. And the people that are in place to do this are very good and talented. They just need the push. They just need the chance and the opportunity. So I think that's a good area for them to explore. Uh, but I don't know. You know, I'm just a guy with the camera 
talking about stuff I like and things that make sense, kind of, to me. Uh, U.S. Champ and WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I don't know who they could, if, if they just did an all African American championship cast, which would probably be, well, it wouldn't be racist because we, for the most part, had all Caucasian champions, so, or Russian champions, still Caucasian. I mean, I don't have anything against anybody, but just imagine. That would be interesting, you know? But, you guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What did you like or didn't like about SmackDown? What did you want to see? What are your concerns with the WWE right now? Just let me know, and I'll try to get on that comments with you and say whatever I say or can think of. El Phoenix for Phoenix Rising. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Oh, you all have a super freaking awesome day. I apologize for the wavering in videos. Recently, I was with family, so you know how that goes. But remember, if your barber knows the milkman who knows the UPS man who delivered a package to somebody that has a YouTube channel, tell them to subscribe.